Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Bringing the Zoo to You. My name is Scott and I'm an animal care specialist here at Brookfield Zoo in Wild Encounters. I'm joined today by another animal care specialist, Francine. And then uh, the two of us are joined by the star of the show today who is Peterson. Um, Peterson is really cool, one of the most unique animals we have here at the zoo and really one of the most unique mammals in the world. Um, Peterson is what is known as a Southern Tamandua. And the reason we are joined here by Peterson today is that we are celebrating anteaters. So this upcoming Sunday, November 29th, is World Anteater Day or World Tamandua Day. So Peterson here, if you have been to the zoo and walked through Tropic World, you may have seen his cousin, which is the giant anteater. Many people are more familiar with the giant anteater. You can see them here on exhibit. Um, but Peterson is a relative of the giant anteater, and they are also, uh, tomatoes are also known as the lesser anteater or the collared anteater. And they get that name because if you look at those black spots or stripes along his back, it kind of looks like they're wearing a collar. So um, they are also related to the northern tomandua, which has a uh, range that's a little bit further north. Um, southern tamanduas are found all over South America, whereas northern tamanduas are actually from Mexico and parts of Central America. But if you were to look at the two of them side by side, they do look pretty similar, but northern tamanduas tend to have a more distinct V-shape in black along their back. Um, and then they are also, like I said, they are um, related to the giant anteater as well as the silky anteater. But this, these four animals, or these four species, are um, in a very unique category, and they have some really cool characteristics. So if you notice, Francine here is um, feeding Peterson through these tiny little tubes, and he's getting some treats that he really likes. Um, they like to eat bugs, they like to eat juicy fruits. Um, but if you look at Peterson when he's sticking his long snout in there and sticking that tongue out, tamanduas are equipped with a really long, sticky, barbed tongue. Um, their tongues tend to be about 12 to 16 inches long. And they're really unique because tamanduas uh, don't have teeth. So they're one of the few mammals that don't have teeth, so they can't chew on their food and grind their food like we would, or like a lot of other animals would. So they actually have to slurp up their food. So um, they primarily eat ants, which is where the name comes from. Uh, they can eat about 9,000 ants a day. Um, but then in the wild, they'll mostly eat ants and termites. So the way they are able to slurp those bugs up like Peterson is doing right now is by sticking that long tongue out and then they stick the bugs to their tongue and they slurp them up. Now tamanduas, you might be wondering how are they going to you know, digest their food if they're, not, if they're not chewing it and mashing it up like we do with our food. Well, tamandua's stomachs are equipped kind of like a bird's gizzard where it actually breaks down the food. So their stomachs are actually, have a lot of muscular folds in them and they make really strong contractions to break those bugs down. Um, so you'll kind of notice, like I said, he's got that long tongue. It's a little bit like, uh, like those sticky hands you get out of vending machines, except with Peterson, he's going to use it to eat ants rather than drive his parents crazy running around the house sticking to everything. Uh, but we're going to let Peterson wander a little bit here. One main thing about tamanduas is that they spend most of their time foraging. They have really poor eyesight, but they have a really good sense of smell and really good hearing. So Peterson's probably just looking around. He's got some unique smells. He's got some interesting things going on. So he's just checking to see if there's any food laying around, something he might be able to grab. But if you take a close look at what, the way Peterson walks, so their, uh, their paws are equipped with these really long claws. Um, so when they walk, they walk on the side of their feet, and it might look a little goofy to us, but the reason they walk that way is so they don't puncture their feet. So he's got four really long claws on the front here, and then he's got five on his back legs. Um, and those claws serve several different functions. They are semi-arboreal, which means they spend some of their time on the ground, but they will spend a lot of time up in trees. Peterson is uh, opting for the ground at the moment, but in the wild they they live in some dry forests, rainforests, and they will spend a ton of their time up in the trees. Um, they come equipped with a long prehensile tail that helps them grab onto branches. Those long claws, like I said, helps them grab onto branches as well. 
But the main function of those big claws is that they are used to break open ant hills and termite mounds. So as I mentioned earlier, um, they do, they will eat about 9,000 ants a day when they're active during the day or at night, they spend most of their time looking for ants. If you look at Peterson here, he's got these really strong forearms. Kind of looks like Popeye the Sailor Man. And those strong forearms help him break up in ant hills and termite mounds. And then those claws are used as well to break that stuff open. And then he can stick that long tongue in there and slurp, slurp up ants and termites. Another uh, unique thing about them, you might be sitting at home on your couch or sitting at your kitchen table watching Facebook right now, and you hear about these tamanduas digging into ant hills, might make your skin crawl a little bit. Well, Peterson has some really thick fur. Um, They're actually equipped, kind of built like they have their own uh, beekeeper suit almost. And they have this really thick, coarse fur, so that way that helps them dig into stuff. Although it is not their primary diet, they have been known to eat bees and other bugs as well. So they can break open uh, beehives, they can break open ant hills, and then their fur protects them from getting all bit up and really annoyed by those bugs. Yes, so Peterson is uh, actually testing out some of our enrichment that we use right now. We have a lot of different things built and made uh, to use as enrichment for our animals. So Peterson is getting some really good exercise, kind of like a giant hamster wheel that they can run on. So we use this for a lot of our animals and uh, Peterson seems to be having a pretty good time with it right now. So one thing, another thing about tamanduas, like I said, they don't have um, too many defenses. They can't use teeth to bite a predator. Uh, main predators they would have to worry about in the wild would be uh, some cats like jaguars or smaller predatory cats that, uh, that reside in South America. But another thing they would have to worry about is um, some birds of prey, like large birds like a harpy eagle. And to protect themselves, they will use those long claws. So they have, like I said, they have really strong forearms, they have really big scary claws. Um, and then they, they can actually um, produce a scent gland that's at the, they have a scent gland at the base of their tail that they produce a really stinky smell. So um, people that study it may think that their scent gland or that smell that they put out is about four times as strong as the smell of a skunk. So any of you watching at home, you probably smelled skunks in your house before. You probably smelled them driving along the road. And just driving down the street, you can smell how strong that is. So now imagine a scent that is about four times that smell. Um, and it really, it really is potent. <laughs> so you could, if you've been to uh, Hamill Family Play Zoo where Peterson and uh, his buddy Tallulah live, um, you might have smelled it before too. All right, well, uh, we want to thank you for joining us on Facebook today. Um, you can always... You can always help us out by going to czs.org, um, or you can, you know, watch us on social media and Facebook, Instagram, all those things. And we like to uh, remind you to this Sunday when you're sitting down to watch football or maybe get ready for the work week, just give an extra thought and some love to our uh, anteaters of the world as we celebrate World Anteater Day. Um, and upcoming this weekend, we are also starting our holiday magic, so we'd love to see you guys come out and join us for the holidays. And uh, have, a, have a happy and safe Thanksgiving.